This video is going to give you an overview of processing accounts payable documents with the FSOFT Transact platform. So to get started, I'm going to log into our web-based interface. And what I'm logging into is really just an exception queue. So as documents are processed, the idea is that they're going to go straight through from import um, through our classification and extraction engines and then be exported into a repository, a database, or any other application downstream from the FSOF platform. During that processing, however, there may be times when documents need to be reviewed or validated by users, and that's the screen that you're looking at here. So I'm going to open up this batch, and now you can see that this was a batch of documents that came in, and I have some invoices, a credit memo, I have a bill of lading, amongst some other invoices here. Now you can probably tell that just by looking at the documents on the left that the bill of lading is the one that has an issue, as noted by this red bar next to it. Our platform will also automatically bring the user to the very first problem document in this batch that needs to be reviewed. And in this case, really what this is saying is that, you know, the FSOF platform thinks this is a bill of lading. However, it's just not entirely confident or sure that it actually is. So it's just looking for some user uh, recognition to ensure that that is the correct classification. If it wasn't and the user wanted to override that, they could simply come up to this drop down list and then select a different type of document very easily and it will automatically update it just like you see there. Let's go ahead and switch this back though to a bill of waiting and then I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut. So just to show you we have a little cheat sheet of all of the different keyboard shortcuts that can be accessed uh, via a series of hotkeys and shortcuts. So I'm just going to use Control E, and as soon as I do that, it turns that document green, meaning that it's been reviewed and it's now a good document. And when I encounter the last um, exception in this batch, I'll get a message right here alerting me that everything is finished for this batch and I can basically just continue on with my work. So I'm just going to hit say OK. Now I'd like to show you a couple batches that skip that first review screen, and they stop in our validation step. Now our validation step is where all of our extracted data is analyzed and run through some validation rules. And if things don't quite uh, match any patterns or rules that we have in place, then that batch of documents stops and waits for some user input. So let's open up this first batch. So here you can see that we have a new batch of invoices that have worked its way through the system. So overall, the, the general layout looks very um, similar to that first screen that I just showed you. The primary difference is that now we have the index fields that are being extracted in the center column here instead of the page thumbnails um, that you previously saw. We're also still using that red light green light system to indicate which documents within the batch have an issue that has to be looked at. Uh, furthermore, we're also going to change the color of the field um, on that exception document. Uh, again, just to give the user a little more visibility and ease of use into what exception needs to be looked at. So in this case, you can see that uh, this is really just saying you know, that there needs to be an invoice number extracted from this invoice before it can continue on. Some of these fields can be mandatory or non-mandatory, so as you see, not every invoice will, be, uh, will have a PO number associated with it, same with maybe a tax or even a subtotal for that matter. So these fields are okay if they're blank. However, invoice number, we absolutely want that to be captured uh, prior to sending this um, on to the next stop. Now, based on our extraction rules and the way they were extracting this data, we're looking for certain elements. We're looking for anchor points and really trying to uh, look for those keywords that indicate where the invoice number is. So we're not using fixed coordinates. We're not always looking in the top right hand corner. We're essentially looking anywhere on this invoice and intelligently identifying what that invoice number is. Now, in this case, you can obviously see that we've got some water stains or maybe a coffee stain that cover this invoice number, um, thereby preventing our, our OCR engine from picking that up. So in this case, I can simply manually just go and type that in. When I type in a value that matches in it, uh, our expected validation rule, then you can see that that box will automatically turn white, indicating that that's a good match. And now I can use that same Control E shortcut to continue on to my next exception. Now in this case, again, we're also uh, looking for the invoice number that we were not able to capture automatically. And the reason being is that Currently, the extraction rules are looking for invoice hashtag or any other iteration of this anchor, and then looking directly to the right of it for that number. 
Now in this particular invoice from Promo Prints, you can see that there's quite a bit of offset between where the invoice number actually is and where the anchor exists. And that's the reason that it failed in this particular case. So here I can just simply click on this number and then automatically capture it and populate that invoice number box. Now what's even better about using that point and click um, validation method is that by clicking on that invoice number our machine learning algorithm behind the scenes is going to now take that information from that mouse click and add that to the machine learning um, algorithm for extraction rules. Now next time we get an invoice from Promo Prints that invoice number will automatically be captured without having to go in and define any additional extraction rules. And that's the last exception in this batch. And the last one that I want to show you is um, showing our line item extraction and also our line item matching module. So um, these are uh, PO based invoices and so there is a PO number that's referenced as you can see here. Now the reason that, that this has an exception is based on our line item matching module and that's why this button up here is red. So when I click on this, this is actually going to toggle us into our line item matching module view. Now on the left hand side are the line items that we've extracted from this invoice. Now on the right hand side are all of those line items from the associated PO and we're trying to match those up as best we can and if there are any line items that have not been matched then that's going to flag that as an exception. So that's what's happening here. It's basically saying that we were not able to find a match for this particular line item uh, from our PO database here. And so therefore the user could go in, you know, make sure that everything was entered correctly into the PO database or that it was actually extracted correctly from the invoice and then continue on working from there. And that was a quick overview of FSOFT's AP processing. Thank you.